Hello, and welcome to the ESRI Developer Summit technical session called Mobile Device Management and the ArcGIS Field Apps. Um, my name is Derek Law, and I'll be one of the presenters for this technical session. Uh, with me is Heather McCracken and Philip Wilson, and they both work on the ArcGIS Field Apps development teams. So what are we going to cover in this technical session? Well, here's the rough agenda. Basically, we'll do a quick review on field operations functionality in the ArcGIS platform. And then I'll do a quick review on the ArcGIS field apps. Which apps are they? But really, the focus of this technical session is about mobile device management, or MDM technology. In other words, how can I use this technology to work with the ArcGIS field apps? So we'll explain conceptually what it is, how it works, what are your options, and then we'll focus on the ArcGIS field apps and how these apps support this MDM technology and Esri's approach. So we'll go over some specific use cases, uh, we'll talk about the functionality we support, and then we'll conclude this technical session with a, a really nice demo showing you how you can deploy the ArcGIS field apps uh, within an MDM platform. Okay, so to start off with and to make sure that we're all on the same page and to have some background, I'm going to talk briefly about the field operations capability within the ArcGIS platform. As you can see, um, we have many different aspects of field operations that ArcGIS can support. Starting at the upper left corner, you can plan your data sets, right? You can use ArcGIS Desktop to create and generate, edit and manage your operational or business data. You can then take that GIS data, put it in a portal, and then leverage it in the field. So for example, on the left, you could do coordination. You could use one of our applications to create assignments and then assign them to crews in the field. In the upper right-hand corner, you can navigate. We actually have an app which allows you to do routing from one location to the next, and we provide turn-by-turn -turn location routing or direction routing. You can look at the data in the field with the understand option on the right by taking your business data, your web maps, and bringing them in the field. Uh, what's key here is the maps or the data that you use in your back office. You can have your crews in the field look at the exact same data. And if there are edits, those data could be updated live in real time. In the lower right-hand corner, you can also do data capture. So, one of the strengths of the ArcGIS platform is that we have several field apps which allows you to do data collection in the field, whether it's map-centric, form-centric, or at speed. And finally, in the lower left, you can monitor your results in real time. So as your crews are in the field collecting or editing, managing data, uh, doing asset management, we have other applications, which we won't discuss in this presentation, such as ArcGIS dashboards, which allows you to monitor and view those results in real time. So it's perfect if you have like a senior stakeholder, senior management, or project leader. Let's take a look at some of the ArcGIS field apps. You can see we have seven apps that are um, kind of bundled together in this umbrella that we define as the ArcGIS field apps. Uh, moving from left to right, we have Workforce for ArcGIS. And this is the app which allows you to basically create assignments. A dispatcher in the back office, he or she can create new assignments and then assign them to crews in the field. Crews in the field would have this app and they can receive those assignments. And as they go about their day and complete tasks, they can you know, give a status update on the assignment and the dispatcher can be updated in real time. The next app is Navigator for ArcGIS, and this is our routing app. Now, what makes this app unique is, yes, you can route from one location to the next, but you can also do routing on your own custom data. And we offer um, a comprehensive street network data set uh, globally with this application. Next, we have Explorer for ArcGIS, and this is the app which allows you to view your data in the field. So if you've prepared a web map in your portal in ArcGIS Online, um, and you've set up pop-ups and various symbology, all that information will be honored and can be viewed in Explorer for ArcGIS. 
Next, we have Collector for ArcGIS, and this is the first of three uh, field data collection apps. Collector for ArcGIS, I would argue, is uh, our oldest and, and most popular field app. It's a map-centric data collection app. It works with your web maps and honors all the configuration settings that you've set for your web maps. Um, it supports offline editing workflows, and uh, it also works with many third-party uh, high-accuracy GPS GNSS devices um, to do high data accuracy collection in the field, especially in remote or rural locations. Um, next, we have Survey123 for ArcGIS, and this is our form-centric data collection application. Um, basically, you can use Survey123, and it's actually a field app, but it's actually part of a larger comprehensive system where you can author forms. We call them smart forms, and it's not just another buzzword. The term smart form has a specific meaning. For example, you might have, let's say, a form or a questionnaire with 100 questions, but certain questions in the form will appear or disappear based on answers to questions earlier in the survey. For example, you might have a question saying, do you own or rent the property? And if you click, I own the property, you might have questions two to 10 appear with additional questions like, you know, what's your mortgage? How long is your uh, mortgage, et cetera. But if you were to click rent, a different set of questions would appear that might ask you, you know, what's your rent, how long is your lease, et cetera. So the form responds or questions will appear or disappear based on answers earlier in the survey. So you can implement conditional business logic, which makes it really, really powerful. We also have ArcGIS Quick Capture, and this application allows you to do data collection at speed. It's really designed to quickly capture information, simple information, um, rapidly. So for example, you might be driving in a vehicle and you might have someone sitting next to you and that person could be taking data collections as the vehicle is in motion, driving. It could be marking things like, how many fire hydrants do I see? Or what is the length of a red curb for a no parking zone? It's not just for vehicles, you can also use it for helicopters or on a bicycle, uh, whatever the use case might be. The point is, it's rapid, simple data collection at speed. And finally, on the far right, we have Tracker for ArcGIS. And this is the app that allows uh, organizations to monitor and track the locations of people in the field in real time live. Um, and this is great for safety concerns. For example, you may want to monitor or track where your staff are during an important event. Um, in case something happens, you can be aware of where their locations are. And one of the key aspects of Tracker for ArcGIS is we've ensured that we've kept um, the privacy um, aspect of a field crew person in mind. So the field crew person is the one who has control on uh, when they are being tracked. Now with this in mind, if I have these field apps, we have lots of mobile security challenges, right? Here are some factors to consider. You know, are our users, you know, connecting outside the intranet? So are they going to connect to a VPN, a virtual private network to access our data content? What are the author authentication authorization challenges, right? How do we verify their identity when they try to access the network? Are we gonna support disconnected editing workflows? In other words, are we gonna allow them to take data offline onto, onto their device to go out into the field where they're not connected and then come back? Um, what about the mobile devices themselves? Is the organization going to give our field crew people uh, corporate issue devices or do you have a BYOD, a bring your own device policy, in which case that device is owned by the field crew person and we have to secure it. So there are lots of considerations for enabling mobile security and these are aspects like mobile device management, mobile application management, and there's lots of third party software that can enable this, such as Mobile Iron, Mass360, AirWatch, Intune, et cetera. And we'll, we'll touch on some of these aspects as we go through this presentation. Now at a high level, here are some things that we at Esri feel you should think about or take into consideration as you're thinking about mobile security, right? You have to perform authentication and authorization. 
In other words, authentication is the process of how are you going to verify the login credentials of a mobile user trying to access your internal network. And we have a bunch of security options there. The second aspect is authorization. Once they've been given access to the network, what can they do within the network? In other words, what data sets can they see or access? Um, another aspect is, is data encrypted while it's in transit? And we support HTTPS or hypertext transfer protocols through TLS or transport layer security. And this is basically an industry standard. When your data is stored on the device, is it secure? Another aspect is segmentation, right? If you have data that you're going to share publicly, well, you may want to consider storing it in ArcGIS Online, in another cloud platform, or in a DMZ. If you have really secure private business data, you might want to store it within your intranet using ArcGIS Enterprise, an enterprise geodatabase, and certainly behind your firewalls. Now, with these aspects to think about, there is a solution. It's called Enterprise Mobility Management Solutions. Basically, it's like a high-level conceptual term to describe third-party software that you can use uh, to deploy your mobile apps to help address or mitigate some of these concerns that we stated above. So, you know, you can enforce encryption, control how your apps are distributed on the mobile devices, you can remote wipe the apps. Um, you can also control the security certificates. Now, focusing more on this EMM solution, because that's a high-level conceptual term, there's this idea of mobile device management or MDM technology. So this is one aspect of an EMM solution. And basically, MDM software is basically third-party software that IT administrators use to basically apply and enforce security for mobile devices accessing an organization's internal network. So the software is designed to optimize functionality, enforce security, and more importantly, protect the internal network of an organization, right? And if you are in a medium to large organization, you may want to check with your IT department or group to ask if they might already have MDM software running within the organization. Now, on this slide here, we have a conceptual diagram to show you that mobile device management technology doesn't just apply to GIS software. It actually applies at a corporate level to all sorts of software components. So you can see in the lower left-hand corner, we have that green checkbox, it's device management. It can control when that device can access the internal network and what it can do, right, the permissions. As an IT administrator, you can run audits and reports on the app to see how often that mobile device is connecting to the intranet, if there's a problem. You can manage the profile, right? So the user or users of that mobile device, what can they access? Um, what are their permissions? You can control which apps are deployed on that device through application management. And it controls security. And it's not just, you know, the ArcGIS field apps, but it can also control your email or content that you see. Or you could apply containerization. For in some pieces of software or MDM software, you could actually partition some space on that mobile device to make sure that everything within that one partition space is secure. So these are factors to consider. So why do organizations use MDM technology? Well, lots of reasons that you can see on the slide here. Uh, it enables easier management of mobile devices. It makes the job of IT admins easier so they can quickly and easily deploy apps to save time. Um, keeps the apps and the data secure. It certainly helps with your BYOD policies. So if you have MDM software and uh, you have your organization's app running on someone's personal device, you can use MDM software to remote wipe it. And the key takeaway is really that bullet in orange text, right? Using MDM software allows for better security and more control of devices. And as we indicated a couple of slides ago, MDM software is typically part of a larger EMM security strategy within an organization.
Now, these are high-level conceptual bullets. Let, let's take a look at some more detailed specifics. What can I do with MDM technology? Well, number one, I can configure devices, right? So again, some examples, sending up an email, setting up the ability to make a VPN or virtual private connection, um, applying certificates for them to access the intranet or internal network. You could certainly restrict some functionality on the mobile device. Maybe a camera can only work for certain apps, or you can only download certain apps from a specific part of the app store. Um, you can remotely manage the device, so you can track where it is. You could apply a remote wipe if it gets stolen or a lock. Um, you can also manage apps running on the mobile device. So you can apply updates, maybe do an install with a special configuration. And at the end of the day, all of this is done to ensure better security, right? To protect, um, number one, the corporate internal network, but also your field crew, personnel, and staff. Let's take a look at how MDM technology works at a conceptual level. So you can see on the slide here, um, in the diagram in the bottom of the slide, you can see we start off with MDM software. It's typically running in the cloud. And you can have an administrator, and he or she would typically, typically connect to the MDM software through an MDM management console. So it's typically a web browser application where they can connect and then basically work with the MDM software. So once you have this set up, the first step is you would take a device, and the MDM administrator would then register that device with the MDM software. Once that device is registered, it becomes a managed device. And typically that device is then assigned to a group so that the administrator can then assign permission settings and security controls, et cetera. They can apply policies, configurations, and restrictions. Now next, the MDM admin would typically register some mobile apps with the MDM software. On this conceptual slide here, let's say, for example, the MDM admin registered Collector and Survey123, those field apps, with the MDM software. Once the admin has done that, what it allows the admin to do is the admin can then push the mobile apps, in this case, Collector and Survey123, from the MDM software to the manage the device. In other words, it can remote install Collector and Survey123 on that device. And it does it uh, through these policies and configuration settings within the MDM software. So this is pretty cool. It's a great time saver, especially if you had to, let's say for example, deploy Collector and Survey123 on hundreds or thousands of mobile devices. It also updates, really. So how does MDM software work? A little bit under the covers, well, Again, we have this conceptual diagram at the bottom of our slide, and you can see now we have two key pieces. Within the cloud, the MDM software is actually running an MDM server. And on the managed mobile device, there's actually MDM software running. It's called an MDM agent. So the two are in sync. And as the MDM admin defines these policies, restrictions, and registers apps, um, in the MDM software, once it's done, the MDM admin can then apply this or push these changes to the managed device via the MDM agent. And this is how it works. Um, and again, thus far, these examples that we've discussed are MDM platform agnostic. These are really meant to highlight conceptually what's happening behind the scenes. So what's the Esri approach? Right? Um, many MDM platforms provide their own APIs to develop against. So we have some examples here, such as AirWatch, Intune, MobileIron. And the key takeaway on the slide is for Esri, our approach is MDM agnostic. We don't build functionality or capabilities for one specific MDM platform. We try to build uniform capabilities that are supported across many different MDM platforms. And we follow this app config community standard, which I'll talk about on the next slide. Another thing to be aware of is the ArcGIS field apps do not support any MDM vendor APIs. So this idea of app wrapping, 
You may have heard that term before. Um, we don't follow that deployment pattern. So the app config community, right? You see on the slide here in the upper left-hand corner, we've given the uh, URL to go to this location. And really, this is an online community that focuses on providing tools and best practices around um, native app deployment in mobile devices. And they basically, they try to define some best practices for developers and also for security deployments. Um, as you can see on the screenshot on the slide here, um, there's actually, this is just a small portion, but there's many very popular, very uh, well-known and commonly used MDM vendors and providers that participate in this organization. And collectively, they try to share and give pra best practices um, on, on how uh, mobile app developers can leverage these best practices to basically enforce better security for mobile devices. So the app config community defines a set of standard functionality and parameters that all MDM software should support as a best practice. Um, they have on their web pages um, some great guidelines for both iOS and Android platform developers. And if you're a mobile developer and you have ideas, you could certainly join the community um, to learn and also contribute. Now, if we take a, a deeper dive into how the app config community works, there's actually four high-level areas, right? Um, one aspect is app configuration. What are some things that you can do to configure your mobile app um, before you deploy it onto a mobile device? Looking in the upper right-hand corner, another one is security policies and access controls, right? What are some security settings that you can apply or enforce uh, for your mobile app? Another aspect in the lower left is app tunnel. You know, you could set it up so that when you deploy your mobile app, it creates a tunnel, a VPN tunnel, so a virtual private network connection to your internal network. And that tunnel will only run or only work for when it, whenever your app is open. Otherwise, it shuts down. So that's another aspect. And finally, in the lower right-hand corner, we also can enable single sign-in. Now, one of the key takeaways on the slide is that with respect to the ArcGIS field apps and Esri technology, our development teams have focused on enabling settings for app configuration, which is the aspect in the upper left-hand corner. For the other four aspects, security policies and access control, app tunnel, and single sign-on, all of our ArcGIS field apps will behave and work like any other mobile app that you deploy. So there's nothing special that we've done. Now, we've talked at a high level about, you know, MDM technology. We've explained and reviewed what it is conceptually. We talked about how Esri's approach has been to designing and deploying the ArcGIS field apps to support MDM technology. Let's look at what the ArcGIS really support. And you can see on this slide here, we have a simple table with the seven ArcGIS field apps on the left. And you can see that we have two columns, one column in the middle called portal URL. That's one of the key implementations that all of the ArcGIS field apps uh, currently support with the Survey123 app coming online very soon. And then the column on the right are some specific app settings that several of the other apps like Navigator and Tracker uniquely support. And I'm going to go over these um, over the next couple of slides. The first example is Portal URL. And this is a parameter that Esri has enabled for all of our field apps. The idea is that we want to make life easier for crews in the fields. So what you can do with an MDM platform is configure this parameter to make it easier for a field crew person to connect to a portal. And you're looking at a screenshot here of what's shown in the help documentation. But if you focus on the, the bottom part of the slide, this is typically what happens when you don't enable this parameter. Let's say I have my device, I click the collector icon to open the app. You'll see now uh, the app opens and I can click either sign into ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. If I were to click connect to ArcGIS Enterprise, I would see this screen 
where I would have to provide the URL address of the portal for ArcGIS instance. I can certainly add it, and once I hit continue, it would then prompt me to give my login to that portal for ArcGIS instance. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with this workflow. It's perfectly fine. But again, one of our goals is to make our field crew users happy and simplify workflows for them. So if I were to enable the portal URL parameter, then I would see this user experience. Notice the three screenshots in the middle of the slide are covered. And now, if I were to click and open the collector for ArcGIS app, I've already pre-configured the portal URL parameter, then those three screens would be bypassed and I would be immediately um, taken to the login screen, which is kind of useful, right? The field crew person, he or she does not have to worry about the portal URL anymore because we've already baked it into the app using MDM technology. Here's an additional parameter or a couple of additional parameters for Tracker for ArcGIS. Now, Tracker supports a portal URL property, but also two additional configuration parameters. The first is upload tracks frequency, and the second is update LKL frequency. LKL stands for last known location. And again, you can use the MDM platform to basically control how often this information is stored back inside the portal. So it's really useful if you want to control, you know, how much data you want to store as you're recording those tracks. Then we have Navigator for ArcGIS. It also supports the portal URL parameter, but it also has this other uh, parameter, which is only available on iOS, which is Enable Local Authentication. This was deployed based on a specific customer request where the customer had asked every time uh, the Navigator app turns on, it prompts the end user to give some biometric identification. So basically check for the thumbprint to turn the app back on and to relaunch it. And again, this is useful um, and something you can deploy within the MDM platform. Now I've talked a lot of theory. I've talked about how um, what MDM technology is and the, how the ArcGIS field apps support it. Let's take a look at a real demo. So my colleague, Philip Wilson, is now going to show you how you can use uh, MDM technology to you know, register an ArcGIS field app and then deploy it. Thanks, Derek. In the following demo, we're going to show you how you can use an MDM solution to enable your organization to manage its mobile users, devices, applications, policies, and security. For this demo, we will use VM AirWatch. This is one of many MDM solutions available. However, you can achieve the same level of configuration, security, and application management with one of the many other solutions. For example, Microsoft Intune, Mobile Lion, Samsung Knox, IBM Mass360, Cisco Zen Mobile, and many more. I will focus only on a few parts of AirWatch today. However, there are many additional features and configurations you can implement with an MDM. It is a good idea to research further what features and configurations are suitable to your organization and which MDM solutions offers the best match for your enterprise and what you are trying to achieve. Okay, so let's now take a look at AirWatch. I am now logged into AirWatch on my desktop browser as a console administrator, so I have full access and permissions to all parts of the console. When we first log in, we are welcome with the Devices dashboard, which is an overview with device and application summary information. This is a useful way to get a quick overview of the status of your devices, apps and users, and it will highlight if there is anything that needs your urgent attention, such as devices with no passcodes or devices not currently encrypted. Here we can scroll down to see more parts of the dashboard. Down the left hand side of the AirWatch console, you will see additional tabs for managing devices, accounts, apps and books, content, email, telecom, and some more admin settings to control groups and settings. Remember that each MDM solution is different. So in other MDM consoles, these tabs may be called different things, laid out in different places, and the settings could get configured differently, but the overall concept should be the same. Setting up Esri mobile apps with your MDM solution and preparing your devices involves a few simple steps to get started. These include 
adding a user, adding a device, adding an app, creating a profile, assigning the app to the device and the user, and then sitting back and watching as the MDM configures your device with all of the settings and apps that you have configured. Today we will look at how you can deploy Collector for ArcGIS via AirWatch to an iOS device. We can then use AirWatch to install and apply the portal URL app config setting to the Collector app so that the user does not need to configure this manually themselves in the app. This can save time and reduce errors when trying to set up new devices. Following that, let's also take a look at how we can deploy Navigator for ArcGIS to the same device and use per app VPN settings so that when we have a portal that is inside our firewall and not publicly accessible on the internet, we can still connect to it, but only for this app when using the per app VPN settings. This means that as soon as we launch the app, the VPN will automatically be connected and we can access the maps and data that are shared on our portal. So to start, let's take a look at my user account I'll be using today and the iOS device, which has already been added to AirWatch for this demo. So for this, we navigate to accounts. We can see the list view of all the current users that are in our um, AirWatch portal. And we can find uh, myself here, my Philip Wilson, P. Wilson account. This will list some information about my account, which devices I have currently enrolled into AirWatch, and some other information such as terms of use, event logs, and shared device logs. As you could see, I have one device. We can click on that here to see which device it was, and it will take us directly to the devices details view where we can see all the information about this device. We can see security information, if there's any OS updates available, how many apps are installed that were um, pushed from the MDM or, or from other locations, certificates, um, my basic user information, and then some other device information such as serial numbers, build numbers, and um, important information that you may want to, to consider when you're managing this. We also see some simple dashboard information around when it was last seen, when the device was enrolled, and we can also look through some of the historic information around compliance, profiles, apps. This will list all apps, not just those that are MDM managed. Um, we can see updates, content, um, location and there is many more settings available for this device if they have been configured. We can also do some simple um, processes such as querying the device, uh, sending a message to the device, locking the device if it was lost or stolen, remote assist and then there's some more um, administration actions such as um, querying device information, clearing uh, the passcode on the device, generating app tokens, enterprise wipes to completely take everything off that was managed by the MDM or even a device wipe. Um, you can also find many other settings to, to manage the device under this menu. The next part of AirWatch we'll now take a look at is how you can manage profiles and apps and devices and users. And AirWatch does this through assignment groups. These are groups that you can add and you can either add groups of users to them, uh, devices, types of devices, and they can also be connected to your Active Directory if you already have some predefined groups that you use in your Windows environment. We can find this setting under the Groups and Settings, Groups, Assignment Groups, and here we can see all of the smart groups that have been added. Uh, for today's demo, I've created one called the Dev Summit MDM Demo, and here I have added my device already to this, this group. So we can, um, we can have a look here and we can see um, all the devices that are added. At the moment, there's only one. Uh, and then we can also make any changes to the group we need. Um, I don't currently need to make any changes. However, if we did, it would come through these steps and it would tell us uh, which changes it's going to make to which profiles, uh, to which applications, etc. So we'll just go back and cancel this. And now we'll take a look at setting up an iOS device profile. Under the Devices menu, we have a sub-menu for Profiles and Resources. We've already created an iOS profile for the purposes of this demonstration to save time. Um, and this profile is used on the device to manage the OS level settings. It is not, managed, it is not there to, to manage uh, apps or, or local settings in apps, but purely at an OS level with restrictions and passcode settings, uh, Wi-Fi, email, internet. So we can take a look at the one we've already created, which is the Dev Summer MDM demo profile. In this profile, uh, we have filled in the general information and we have also added the smart group assignment group Dev Summit MDM demo.
This means that my device will now get this profile. There weren't too many other settings we needed to include for this. However, some of the, the more important ones that you may like to do would be the passcode. You can, you can enforce that a re require passcode on device, um, allow simple passcodes. If you don't want to allow 000 or 1234, you can tick this off. You can also require alphanumeric and other types of password requirements. On top of this, we have restrictions. Here we can restrict daily updates of OS. We can, uh, we can turn off the allow use of camera, FaceTime, screen capture, passcode, biometric. Um, there are many settings in this restrictions part of the profile. As you can see, as I scroll down, uh, you can turn Siri on and off. You can allow um, configuration restrictions, erase content, wallpapers, notifications, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, there is a long list here, and uh, many of these um, sub settings on the side here have a lot of different different configurations. Uh, we generally are just using the standard one that is um, that comes as default. However, you can modify this as you need. And you'll find in all MDM solutions, they have a very similar set of configurations and profiles available at the device level. So the other, the one main important one would be if you have Wi-Fi and VPN settings. And we'll have a look at this a bit further when we look at the Navigator app shortly. For now, I'll just cancel this as we've already configured it. And we'll go have a look at the Collector app. So now that we have added a user, a device, created a profile for the device, we now need to add an application that we want to push to the device. So here we come to the apps and books, uh, come into the native section, and we can see that we have three types of different apps, internal, public, and purchased. Internal apps are apps that you upload yourself, whether that be an IPA, uh, a uh, an APK, so for, for Android or iOS, or you can also upload Windows and other operating system builds. Public apps are those that come directly from the store. So where your app's been published to the store, it's publicly available, you're using one of the Esri apps or, or any of the other apps that are available in the stores, you can just simply add that to your AirWatch console and then push it to the device. You can then apply settings and configurations on top of that app. Purchase apps will obviously be for any store apps that you've purchased as a organization that you want included. So here what we're going to do now is add collector. We currently, we can filter this to see all of the iOS um, the apps we currently have listed here. And as you'll see, we're currently missing collector. It has not been added from the store, but many of the other Esri apps have. So we'll select add application. We'll select that we want Apple iOS. And now we'll search for collector for ArcGIS. This will now search the store with the account that we have connected to the store and it will find this. It will also bring up some other um, apps that are either made by the same company or it thinks we're in similar search terms. So here we can simply select Collector for ArcGIS and it will now come up with an ad application uh, prompt. If you want, you can change the logo of the app, you can change the name of the app that's used in the MDM and you can also provide categories and some other general information. Now we will click Save and Assign to add this to the AirWatch console and be able to assign it to devices. Once the application has been added, you will be brought to the Add Assignment page. Here you can select to add an assignment and the settings that will go with that assignment. So for the assignment group, we need to choose the Dev Summit MDM demo. We have the option here to choose whether the app delivery method is auto or on demand. This means that if you select auto, it will be automatically installed on the devices in this group. If you select on demand, it will be up to the user to use the, the catalog that's on the device to be able to install the app. So for this, we're gonna select auto. Um, we're also going to select managed access so that the MDM manages the app. Remove on unenroll and make an app MDM managed if, if it's user installed already. So this means if Collector already ins was installed on the device from the store, it would automatically now become managed as part of this setting. We also have some other settings for app tunneling, application configuration, which we'll go through shortly. So now I'm going to add this assignment to this app and we'll get a screen which will now tell us that we've, we've got an assignment and we can see if it's got managed access, remove on enroll in a nice, easy to use. You can therefore now add multiple assignments for different groups and you can apply different settings depending on the, the different users and devices that you have. So here we'll, collect, we'll click Save and Publish. 
and this will bring up which changes of assigned devices it's going to make. In this case, it's going to add the app to this, this device and to this user. In other cases, you may see unchanged or removed if you've changed the assignments that it's now unchanged on a device or it's removing it from another device. And then we'll hit publish. Now what I'm going to do is once I hit publish, I'm going to switch to my, my iPad that I have here and we should be able to see the prompt for collector come up and the collector app get installed. Now this could happen quite quickly, so we'll uh, try and switch as quickly as we can to the device. Here we have the, the iPad and now we can see an app installation warning has appeared on the iPad. It's telling us that the AirWatch MDM console is trying to install the collector for ArcGIS app from the App Store. Um, and it obviously informs you that your iTunes account will not be charged if it was a purchased app as that would be coming from the thing. So here we can simply hit install. And as you can see, we didn't have Collector already installed on this device. We did have some of the other Esri mobile apps such as Workforce, Navigator, Survey and Quick Capture, and these were previously deploy deployed to this device. So now we'll just wait for Collector to install. Um, and once it's installed, we can open up Collector and continue to use it as we normally would if we had installed it from the store. So while this is installing, as it may take some time, we can have a look at the Hub app. The Hub app is the AirWatch app which you install when you first enroll your device. So let's take a look at that one. When you open the Hub app, you'll be brought to this overview page. This basically tells you that you have a what type of account, who you're signed in with, and then there's some other settings that you can go into. Generally, you do not need to perform any actions in the the Hub uh, app. However, it does allow you to, in case of any problems, you can lock the app, you can send data. Sending data syncs the latest information back and then your IT uh, administrator will be able to see it. You can also check location, enrollment and network and messages. There are also some other uh, settings in here to be able to contact your support um, and read some more things about this app. So for this here, we can just do a send data and this will just ensure that we have the latest information from the MDM portal. The other app that comes with Hub when you install it is you will now see a catalog app. The catalog app is basically a portal into AirWatch which allows you to install apps manually. Whilst many apps may be installed automatically through the settings in their assignment, there may be some apps that all users don't need or they can just be um, installed manually. So in this case here, we'll see that Collector, Navigator and Pulse Secure are available in the catalog now we can see that Collector has successfully been installed and we can open Collector. Collector will now work as normal as, a, as an installed and we have the options to sign in from ArcGIS Online or sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. So in this case, if we were wanting to sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise, we would select this and we would have to now specify a new URL. Obviously, if, if you know all your users are using the same ArcGIS Enterprise account and it has the same portal URL, we would want to somehow improve this so that they do not have to type the full server address, which sometimes can be quite lengthy, in every single time they are setting up a newer device or they've installed the, the app again and they need to type it all in. So let's now have a look at a way we can improve that so that we don't need to come into this screen and select ArcGIS Online or Enterprise and that we're always taken to our portal. Back in the AirWatch portal, we can now select Collector for ArcGIS and modify the assignment. By doing this, we will be able to use the app config settings to deploy the portal URL to the application. Here we'll select Assign. We'll select the previously assignment group that we created, select Edit, and we want to scroll down to the application configuration. If we enable this setting, it allows us to um, enter key value pairs to configure for the application to use. So in this case, we will use portal URL, it's a string, and we will enter this um, connection to nitro.maps.arcgis.com. We will now add this assignment, save and publish, and it will tell us that it's unchanged as this app is already installed on the device. However, it will, it will update any settings that need to be updated. Now this can take some time as the new settings need to be pushed out to the device, the profiles and policies and, and settings for the app and the, the device updated. So generally this can happen quite quickly or it could take a few minutes depending on the system. Now we are back on the device and we can open Collector. Previously we saw the option to sign into ArcGIS Online or an Enterprise, however this time on launching Collector for the first time we are straight away taken to the nitro.maps.arcgis.com and we are able to enter a username and password. So here we will type in the username and password and we will select sign in to continue. 
Once we are signed in, we can now see all of the maps that are available for this signed in user to that portal. That made it very easy now to connect to that portal without having to type in that uh, portal address. In this case, it was rather short, but in some cases, this could be a very long address. And if you're having to set up many devices um, regularly, then this can save a lot of time by using the app config settings. Now that we have seen how app configuration works and how it can be applied to an application, Let's take a look at how we can configure per app VPN configuration with your mobile apps. This is important because in the case of the collector app demonstration I just did, the portal was publicly facing. So we were able to connect to that Nitro uh, portal without needing to connect a VPN. However, if your portal is not publicly facing, you will need to connect your VPN first for that app to be able to connect to it. So this is where we configure this now in, in our watch to get this setting to work. This is done at the profile level, so we'll come back into the Dev Summit MDM demo profile we created earlier, and we'll have a look at the VPN settings that have been configured. Here, under the VPN setting option, we have configured the Pulse Secure VPN configuration option. We're using uh, Pulse Secure, and the server we're connecting to is connect.esri.com. Some other options that need to be ticked on is per app VPN rules and connect automatically. We are using a packet tunnel provider type. We've also added the Safari domain esri.com, and this is for cases where your application may use an internal browser for the sign in page or the, the OAuth, and this would need to mention the uh, domains that need to be allowed through the per app VPN. As the, as the application is using the browser internally, so that browser needs to be allowed, in this case we're using Safari, to allow esri.com to be authenticated. So in this case, we've made all the settings that we need to, and the rest of the work will be done via the Pulse Secure app that's on the device and in the application settings. Now, this may be slightly different in different MDM solutions. However, the principle is the same. You're basically setting up your VPN connection here and then applying it to your application. So now we'll go have a look at the Navigator app. As you saw before, I already had that installed on my device. However, per app VPN was not configured. So here we can go have a look at apps and books we can go to the public. Here we'll still be sorted by Apple iOS, so we should be able to find Navigator, and we can open Navigator to see its settings. Here in the settings, we can simply go to assignment, and I previously assigned this application to the Dev Summit MDM demo group. So now we need to edit the assignment, and we need to apply the per app VPN settings from the profile we just created and apply them to this application. This is done at every apps level because you may want some apps that use per app VPN and others that don't. In that case, you won't be setting the per app VPN for every single app to use the same settings. You may have different apps that use different settings. Here, we can simply scroll down and see that per app VPN profile has been enabled through app tunneling, and we can select the one. We have many different profiles that we use, so therefore we want to make sure we're using the right one, which was the Dev Summit MDM demo. We will then add this to the device. We will see here that this group now has it and we have VPN access enabled and we can select save and publish. If there are any changes, they will show up here, otherwise it will remain unchanged. So now that we've published an application with per app VPN, we can see what will happen on the device. So now we'll switch to the device to take a look. On the device, we can see that we already have the Pulse Secure VPN app already installed. We have previously connected this to ensure that the application will work when the per app VPN settings are called, but we can also take a look at the configuration to see the settings. Here you can see that the VPN is only designated for certain applications, mobile Safari, web app and navigator. The top two are used for the internal browser to, to do authentication and com.esri.navigator is the navigator app we added. So now that that's been configured correctly, we can go back and launch the navigator app. You will notice when Navigator launches that you will see a VPN icon in the top right hand corner next to the Wi-Fi signal. This is indicating that per app, v, per app VPN is enabled and is currently in use. When we close the app, this will disappear. So now the VPN is no longer in use. So we open it again and now we can see the VPN logo again. So here, we now want to connect to a portal that's inside our VPN. If we were using ArcGIS Online, we wouldn't need to do this. Or if our portal was public facing, we also wouldn't need to do this. However, I now want to connect to a portal that is on our internal network and is not public facing. So now for I'll, with the VPN connected, I will select sign in for ArcGIS Enterprise. 
I've already added a portal address to make it quicker and I'll select this portal. We will be prompted to sign in with our credentials and when we select sign in we will be successfully taken to our portal and the maps that have been shared with this user account will now be available for use. This is an excellent way of connecting to your internal resources using your MDN. You can set your portal URL through App Config, and then you can configure a per app VPN to be able to enable users out in the field or in any location, provided they have a Wi-Fi or, a, or an internet connection, they can connect easily back into your portal and it's very secure, fast and easy. Well, that concludes our demonstration today. Hopefully that gives you a good understanding of how you can use your MDM to configure simple settings and policies to manage your Esri mobile apps. Hopefully through this presentation and demonstration, we have been able to provide you an in-depth understanding of Esri's field operations and ArcGIS field apps, an overview of mobile device management technology and how it works, and also the approach that Esri has taken to testing and development with MDM solutions. We've also covered the ArcGIS field app support for MDM and how you can make the most of your MDM solution with Esri mobile apps by using things such as app configuration and per app VPN. One last reminder, if you'd like to find out more about Esri's approach to security and mobile applications, please ensure you check out the excellent resource, ArcGIS Secure Mobile Implementation Patterns White Paper, which is available via the Mobile Apps GNet blog post for download. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please talk to your account manager, Esri Support, or one of the many GNet forums to ask questions and find out more information and learn what, others are, what other users are doing in relation to Esri mobile applications. Once again, thank you for your interest in this presentation.